Howdy. I was supposed to record an intro for this, but I forgot to record an intro for this when I was recording it initially. So, uh, here's a little half-assed intro for you. It's my Valentine's video. Um, just so fun to make every year. I know you. I know for a fact you fuckers are lonely because you're watching fucking YouTube videos on Valentine's Day. So, if you need some entertainment, here's some entertainment. This is this video is meant to entertain you, to make you laugh, to make you giggle. Not meant to be taken seriously at all. So, don't take it too seriously, but also have fun. Let's get into it. Howdy, friends. So today, we're gonna be doing uh, a little waifu tier list because uh, we're, we're sticking to dead trends because I've, I've officially hit rock bottom. <laughs> so I've picked an assortment of like 60, 60 some odd uh, characters from random things that I've seen. Some of them were actually recommended by you guys uh, on my Discord, so shout out to you guys, you guys know who you are. Before we get into actually ranking them though, Let's go through the tiers. We're not just doing this generic A tier, B tier. No, we're gonna we're gonna have actual tiers that have actual meaning, and it's not just an arbitrary fucking number. All right. So starting off in the very bottom here, we have in the green, we have no. In the no category, are the are the characters where I wouldn't even want like a friendship with them. I wouldn't even want to associate with you, even remotely. Up above that, we have wholesome. Now these are the characters that I wouldn't really want to fuck, but I would totally be down with like a friendship with or like. You know, having a wholesome little uh, relationship with not like a relationship relationship, you know what I mean, but like a like a wholesome kind of thing, a platonic kind of thing. You know what I mean? We have the uh, the, the the different yet equivalent uh, of wholesome. We have the smash then pass category. Now this category is for characters where I wouldn't want to date them long term. I wouldn't really want to be friends with them necessarily, but I would totally hit that and then quit that, you know what I'm saying? This is the hit it and quit it category. Above that we have dateable, and the dateable category is basically where any any character goes that uh, I, I would totally I would totally date them. I would both fuck them and want to have a, 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 a little a wholesome uh, little relationship there. A non-platonic wholesome relationship, but I would also uh, would want to fuck them. I'm a virgin, you couldn't tell. In our, in, our, in our top tier, we have wife this bitch immediately. I couldn't fit this bitch in here, but this is the th this category is, is otherwise called wife this bitch. These are the characters where I would wife them fucking immediately. This means that they have the, the you know, they're, 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 they're hot. They got um, great personalities. They have great, uh, you know, other things. You know what I mean. This is the category where we are wifing them immediately. Let's get into it. So our first character here is is 2B uh, from Near Automata. So I did a little bit of research before I, uh, I, I came to record this video, and I was under the impression that 2B was like seven feet tall. Apparently she's not, apparently she's like 5'8". I'm 5'11". The, the tallness was originally a factor for me. That was originally like a, mm, that turns me off a little bit from that. I don't know about this, but now that I know she's shorter than me, it's not as intimidating. I would, I would totally date a girl. I'd rather date a girl that's shorter than me than a girl that's taller than me, to be completely honest with you. So we're going to put her in the smash then pass category. She's a robot though, so she probably doesn't have very much personality going for her. I've never played Nier Automata, so I have no fucking idea. Up next we have uh, Aerith, and we're going to put, um, what's her name, Tifa here too, because just to group the characters together from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, we're going to have to put Aerith in Wholesome, because honestly, I could totally see, like, being friends with her and like you know, um, doing doing platonic things. I mean, there's sex appeal there, but I I, I just I don't see it. As for Tifa from Final Fantasy VII, uh, she's going in dateable. She's gonna go to dateable because Tifa not only is she hot, I mean look at her, but she's, I'm pretty sure she's also a parent, like she's a mother, so she's probably very caring just naturally. Um, or from experience, from having a child. So, like, if I'm like, you know, if I'm if I'm sick, which I don't get sick, I, I'm never sick. But if I ever get sick, she'll be like, oh, she'll be there to care for me. You know what I mean? I wouldn't put her in wife immediately though, because I don't exactly know a whole lot about her personality. Because I, again, I haven't played the game. Uh, maybe once the remake comes out, I'll give it a shot. But I don't know about that one, Chief. I'm not a huge Final Fantasy guy. Moving on, we now have the uh, the Dragon Ball characters. So first off, we got everybody's uh, Bay Teen. You know what I'm saying? We got Android 18. She's hot. But the forehead's a little big. Not gonna lie. She's also pretty intimidating. Like she could probably beat the shit out of me. I'm gonna put her in Smash then pass because she's hot, she's attractive, and she's kind of got a lot of uh, you know, like sexual things about her her personality. I guess you could say. I don't know. You, you if you've seen Dragon Ball, you know. But she's like she, she, her personality is like she's so fucking cold. She's robotically cold until like Dragon Ball Super. She has like no emotions at all. Even in Dragon Ball Z, when she does start to have like emotions, you know, she has feelings for Krillin uh, at the end of the the cell arc. But she's still like a complete bitch. We don't see her like. You know, be a, be a caring person in any capacity. She's just like out for the money, and she's out for um, 
pretty much nobody else but herself and maybe her family. That's about it. I, I, I just don't see it. I mean, she's hot, so I'd hit that, but that's about it. Up next, we have Android 21 from Dragon Ball Fighters. So technically, she's not really canon, but who really cares about canon? Fuck canon. Android 21, uh, in both her human form and her Majin form, is pretty fucking hot. And in both forms, uh, you know, if you've played Dragon Ball Fighters, you've seen her, her character development, kind of. But uh, I, if I recall correctly, uh, she she turns good in the end, I think. So that's a, that's a nice little redemption arc. You know, she's, then she becomes nice and wholesome. Uh, so we're going to put her in dateable, because not only would I hit that in both forms, but she's also got a decent personality, she had a nice redemption arc, and that's commendable, uh, to say the least. And to finish off the Dragon Ball girls, we got Bulma. Uh, I opted to go for the Dragon Ball Super Broly design of her, because I like that design the best, though any design of hers really will do, um, except for her old-ass design, when she's fucking old and looks like a fucking Karen. Especially for her, her, uh, her Broly design, I'd put her in dateable. Though, I won't lie, Bulma, her personality can be a little much sometimes, especially if you've seen Dragon Ball. I mean, she's obviously mellowed out as time has gone on. Like, she's completely different in Super than she was in, in original Dragon Ball. Z, I think, is very indicative of that because during Z, she kind of, like, she went from a teenager to, like, an adult and she became, like, a parent during Z. So it's kind of, uh... There's kind of, there's a distinction, I guess, to be made there, where, um, you know, obviously she, she changed a lot as a person and became a more mature person. So, we're gonna throw her in dateable, uh, because I wouldn't, I, mean, I probably wouldn't wife her, but I would definitely be all up in that. Uh, next up we have the Kingdom Hearts girls. So, first up, we have Aqua. Y'all, if you've seen my live streams, y'all already know, Aqua is going in wife immediately. Not only is she banging, but she's also a very caring person, because she cares for her friends very immensely, you know, Terra and Ventus. Um, she's super resilient, she's stuck in the Shadow Realm for like a fucking seven years or some shit, I don't know. What else can you really ask for? Let's be real. She's got a Keyblade so she can beat motherfuckers up if she needs to. I'm into it, I'm down. Alright, so next up we have Kyrie, uh, also from Kingdom Hearts. And Kyrie, honestly, I'll put, I'll, I have to put Kyrie in Wholesome. The thing about Kyrie, right, is that you don't really get to, I, I just, I just can't bring myself to see her in any sexual way, because uh, in the in the game, of course, uh, Sora. Well, in the games, there's multiple. In the games, Sora is like you know always trying to you know find Kyrie and to protect Kyrie, and it, it, it's never necessarily shown in like a romantic way that he's into her. So therefore, I as the player would also not see her in a romantic light because you know Sora sees her more as just like her be his best friend. So it's like oh, I also see her as like you know a friend type. I don't really see her in any any sexual way. So I can't really. I gotta put her in wholesome, cause I totally be friends with you, and we we I seem like a nice a nice gal, but uh, it's it's not gonna happen. All right, moving on to another series. Now we have the uh, the girls from the Legend of Korra. I didn't put any uh, Last Airbender characters on here, cause it's I, a lot of fucking effort, to be honest with you. But first up, we have Asami from the Legend of Korra, and Asami. I'm putting Asami immediately in dateable, because not only is she super hot. Let's 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 keep it real. She's 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 fucking banging. I don't use the word foxy. Uh, at all, in fact, but I would probably describe her as that. She's got that, she's got money, uh, cause her dad was very fucking wealthy, so she inherited all of that, um, when he went to fucking prison, uh, for being a fucking terrorist. She's super, like, uh, understanding, she's very, uh, she'll, she'll support you emotionally, you know what I mean? But, um, I don't know that I would wife her, to be honest with you. In terms of the, uh, you know, the, the, penis and vagina goes. She seems like she'd be very basic. I don't think she'd be into anything crazy. You know what I mean? She'd be, she'd be very, she, she seems like she's a missionary for the sole purpose of reproduction. If you know what I'm saying? So, she's going to dateable. Next up we have Korra, of course, also from The Legend of Korra. She's the fucking titular character. We're wifing her. We're wifing her immediately. Korra is basically Asami, but better. You know what I mean? Um, of course, Korra is a little bit different. She's a lot more brash and she's a lot, maybe, she's a lot more masculine. I'm not necessarily into the masculine half of that. But she's she's physically probably on par with any man. Let's be real. So that's gotta count for something in the sack. You know what I'm saying? She could beat dudes up for me because I'm a, li a weak little little pussy boy. She's also uh, cute as fuck. Just look at this picture. She's also the avatar, so there's status to be to be gained there. She is. Uh, she's got. She she had like the spiritual awakening, of course, over the course of the series, and that's a very commendable thing to strive for and to have accomplished. So. We're wifing her immediately. I'm into this. And the last character from Legend of Korra, we have Kuvira. I'm not feeling the Kuvira. I'm really not. She's she's very Hitlery. 
and we don't like a Hitlery around here. Moving on to the uh, the girls from Neon Genesis Evangelion. First up, we have Asuka Langley Suryu, the the Sundere queen, the original Sundere. I'd have to put her in Smash Then Pass to be honest with you, because. She's kind of a fucking bitch. Shinji did absolutely nothing wrong to her. Rei did absolutely nothing wrong to her. Yet in the show, she's just a complete asshole to both of them for no fucking reason. So, I'd hit that, but also, you're kind of a And I believe, what was it? I believe a different YouTuber said this. I believe it was Giguk who said this. I don't know how you say his name. When you're when you're a young lad, you're always, you're always into Asuka. But as you, as you grow older, everybody kind of becomes more of a Misato man, which is why I'm putting Misato in the wife immediately category. You know, you know, Asuka's for the boys, Misato is for the men. You know what I'm saying? Misato, of course, super uh, in, into her job. Let's, that's, that's, that's an admirable quality right there. She's like, alright, I gotta take my job seriously. Alright, we're doing good here. We're doing good shit here at Nerve. So we gotta, we gotta fucking ball up here. We gotta man up. We gotta woman up, I guess in her case. And, and we gotta, we gotta take command. She takes command of the situation. And you could totally respect that. She's also, uh, hot as fuck. So, Let's, let's, let's be real with that. She's a little too outgoing for me personally, but I feel like that would probably be a good, a good, a good thing to wife up, you know what I mean? So, I'm not a very outgoing person. Uh, I fucking hate other humans. Um, but Misato seems to be the opposite. She seems to be like, alright, let's, uh, let's, as humans, let's, let's human up. What? What the fuck did you say? I feel like she could probably bring me out of my shell a little bit while I uh, bring her into her shell a little more. So we balance each other out. I feel like that would work pretty well. And lastly, for the Evangelion girls, we have Rei Ayanami. And the thing about Rei is a lot of people are like, yo, I'd fuck Rei. I would fuck all... I would, if I were Shinji, I would have fucked all three of the Evangelion girls. Fucking beta cuck. Fuck you. But the thing about Rei is that she's kind of... She, she's cute. You know, she's hot, I guess, kind of. But, uh, you know, she. I feel like she wouldn't be into it if, if we were to... You know what I mean. And personally, I probably don't think I would be into it either. Because if she's not into it, then I'm not into it. You know what I mean? So, she's so, like, shy and, like, um, you know, kind of bland personality-wise that I feel like, I, you know, I, I feel like just the, the act of making her smile is just, like, a, a, a triumph in all and of itself. Like, I would probably feel good if I were able to make her smile. You know what I mean? Like, that's really fucking cheesy and wholesome, but, like, for real. Like, I think that matters more if it would, in Ray's case than any anything anything sexual could possibly be. All right, next up we have uh, some uh, some odds and ends. Uh, so first up we have Bayonetta uh, from Bayonetta, of course. I put Bayonetta in dateable because you know not, not only is she obviously pretty fucking hot and she's also got the very seductive things about her because that's kind of her whole character is uh, is that she's like a succubus witch creature. Fucking I don't know. That's kind of it's kind of hot. Like there's that, but then there's also the fact that she's like you know. She's very skilled, and then you you got to appreciate the skill um, where where it's where it's where it's there. Next up, we have uh, some Zelda characters. So uh, this uh, I believe is Sia um, or Sia's CIA from fucking uh, Hyrule Warriors. I don't know much about this character because uh, I, I haven't played Hyrule Warriors, nor do I know anything about the story. So we're gonna put her in the Smash Then Pass category because. I don't know anything about her personality, I don't know if I'd be into it, but I'd totally hit that, just look at her. Next up we have Midna in her human form from Twilight Princess. That's gonna be a no from me, dog. That is gonna be a no from me, dog. She looks like she doesn't even have fucking skin. She looks like she has fucking scales. That's fucking weird. Her face isn't even really attractive, it's just like fucking odd. Like, what was it? I remember a PBG video way back when, he was like talking about Twilight Princess or whatever, and he's like... Until she... Spoiler alert. Three... Two... One turns into a freaky looking lady. Nintendo, no what? And I must agree with you. I do not want this. What the fuck? Next up, we have, we're getting into Breath of the Wild territory. We have Urbosa from Breath of the Wild. I'm putting her in dateable because not only is she the ruler of, of Grudu, uh, not Grudu Valley, is it Grudu Valley or Grudu? The Grudu Town. The, you know the one. You know what I'm talking about. She was the kind of the ruler of that. She was uh, one of the masters of the Divine Beasts. Um, she's swole as fuck and she's hot as fuck. So, all, all four of those things kind of combine pretty well into, into yeah, I, I totally date her. I don't know if I would wife her though, because she seems like she could be a little overbearing at times, and I don't know if I would be uh, okay with that. And last but not least, in the uh, from the Zelda characters, we have uh, Zelda herself, uh, specifically her Breath of the Wild design though. Any design could really go, um, like I like her Smash Brothers Ultimate design, I like her Skyward Sword design, um, Twilight Princess is eh, but you know, any of those designs kind of really fit here so but we're gonna put her in dateable because Zelda 
the thing about Zelda is that she is not only uh, kind of cute, she's also like very, uh, you know, she's very devoted to her kingdom. You know, she's very devoted to what she does, and she's very caring about her kingdom and therefore uh, of other people. And that's a very admirable quality. I'm into that. Zelda. We got a lot of Pokemon characters here because obviously I'm like 50% Poketuber. Um, I don't know that I want to be, but I do a lot of Pokemon videos on here. So, a lot of Pokemon characters because I like Pokemon a lot. And some of them were requested by you guys. So, um, but first off, we're going to start with Claire. You know, she's going into wife, the, the wife category because if you saw my, my last year's uh, Valentine's Day video, you want to click it, it's right there or it's right there. It's somewhere. One of these corners, it's in there. The little icon. I, I, I put uh, Claire as, I chose Claire as my number one uh, waifu from Pokemon because I kind of had to narrow it down there. And Claire, she's got it going on. She's got it going on physically and she's got it going on, um, you know, mentally and, 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 you know, personality wise. She's constantly living in the shadow of her cousin Lance. Uh, obviously he's the champion or he was the champion at one point of the, uh, the, the, the league or whatever. So she's like, all right, I gotta, I gotta deal with his bullshit. Fuck. I'll just be the best goddamn eighth gym leader that ever was. So she does. She, she strives to be that. That she has a nice little arc in the game, and she's also uh, thick as fuck. So there's that. I am a Claire main in Pokemon Masters. You like y'all have no idea. All right. Next for our Pokemon character, we have Cynthia of the the, uh, the you know the champion of the Sinnoh region. We're gonna put her in dateable. She's a cutie. She's a very strong trainer, and obviously she cares very much for Pokemon and for people. And she kind of wants to explore. That relationship between Pokemon and people, and I kind of, I, I can, I can admire that. You know, she has goals, and I, I, you know, you gotta, you gotta like a girl with goals. You know what I'm saying? Up next, we have Elisa from the, uh, the Unova. She's one of the Unova gym leaders of uh, what is it, Nambasa City, I believe. We're gonna put her in dateable as well, cause she's, cause she's famous as hell. She's, she's super famous in the Unova region. So you gotta be able to take advantage of that. Like if you're dating a famous person, you in turn are probably gonna become famous as well. By the way, I recently went up from a Z-list YouTuber to a Q-list YouTuber. So if any ladies want a little bit of this, want a little taste of this 14K sub action, hit me up. Up next we have Flannery uh, from the Hoenn region. I'm gonna put her in wholesome. Um, I mean, she's a cutie, and I'd totally be down to be friends with her, but she, I, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. Up next, we have Jessie uh, from Pokemon. I opted to go for her design in the anime, which is fine, it's whatever. Um, for Jess, I put Jessie in Smash then pass, to be completely honest with you. Because I'd hit that, but she's, again, a, a lot like Asuka, she's very, she's very bitchy. And I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't put up with that long term. Uh, next up we have Karen from the uh, the Johto Elite Four, I believe. She's a hot, I'd smash the pass, but I'm not, I'm not entirely into the whole MILF thing. Don't know about long term, that'd be a little bit weird. I don't, see the thing about age gaps to me is really weird, cause like, I would totally date a girl that was within like, a year or two of me. You know what I mean? Like, if she's a year, a year or two younger, I'm cool. If she's a year or two older, a little bit less cool, but that's still pretty cool. That's that's per I think that's perfectly reasonable. But like, I wouldn't want to date a girl that's like five years older than me, you know. Or I obviously I don't want to be that for anybody younger than me either. So I don't want you don't want you don't want to stretch your age gap too far because it's a little bit weird. It's, at a certain point, it becomes fucking weird. But as long, I guess as long as you're both consenting adults, it's fine. Um, but we're gonna put her in Smash in the Past because I'm I'm personally just not into older older women. Next up, we have Lorelai uh, from the Kanto Elite Four. Uh, yeah, the, these, these characters have their heads cut off. We're gonna put her in Smash Then Pass as well, because again, I totally hit that, but I'm not really into the uh, the older women. The glasses are kind of cute on her, though. I'm not gonna lie. I'm feeling the glasses. Next up, we have uh, Lucy from, I believe, the Hoenn Battle Frontier. Um, I, I don't know if she's from Hoenn, but she's definitely in the Battle Frontier, a Battle Frontier brain. Lucy's pretty fucking cute. She's got the whole, the whole, the whole emo thing going on. I kind of like it. I'm feeling it, though I don't remember much from her personality, to be completely honest with you, so we're gonna put her in Smash Then Pass, because I just don't, I just simply don't remember much about her personality to really make a make a full judgment call on here. Uh, next from Pokemon, we have Nessa from, uh, you know, Sword and Shield. She's one of the newest gym leaders, one of the gym leaders that a lot of people wanted to fuck. Uh, probably alongside B. I forgot to put B on this tier list because I'm fucking lazy. I already have way too many Pokemon characters on here anyway, but for Nessa, we're gonna put Wholesome because I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. I don't think she's that, I mean, she's attractive, I guess. Like, she's a, a cute character, nice character design. The outfit, very revealing, so I think that's probably why a lot of fucking neckbeard weeaboo losers were like, oh, oh, she's such a, such a waifu. She is, but, eh, I'm, ju I'm just not feeling that. I'm not into it. I'm just not into it. Uh, next up, we have Olivia from uh, the Alola region. From She's one of the trial captains. Uh, we're going to put her in dateable, because look at her. She's fucking hot. She is fuck. I would... Bro, this video would get taken down if I told you the things that I would do to her. You have no fucking idea. However, her personality isn't quite like 
at the top. She kind of, she again, she can be very like overbearing. She's like, yeah, we're in a strike in this bitch. Yeah. But then, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, then she can also be like very, very chill and very lax. You know, I'm putting her in dateable kind of for the same reason that I put Cora in the wife category. It's kind of weird, but like, I don't know. I'm not fully into it. I'm not. I'm not fully on board with the, uh, the on the Olivia train, if you know what I'm saying. Next up, we have Chantal from the uh, Unova Elite Four, I believe. Uh, I'm putting her in, whole, in, her in wholesome. I'm, I'm not into her whole vibe. I'm really not. I believe this one was requested to me uh, by, uh, by a fan in the Discord. So shout out to you. I don't remember who it was exactly, but somebody requested Chantal. I'm not into the I'm not into the haircut. I'm not into the whole the whole vibe currently, right there. And she reads books like it's nobody's fucking business. What are you a fucking nerd? Fuck you. I mean, I'd, be, I'd totally be friends with you. I mean, she seems like she'd be I could, you, you, like a wholesome relationship could form there, but nothing like nothing sexual. I totally wouldn't date you either because you're probably smarter than me, and we can't have that because I'm big brain man, and this is fucking impossible. Next up, we have Skyla from the uh, from the Unova region, one of the Unova gym leaders. We are gonna put her in dateable because she's a very free spirit because she's like you know a flying type expert, and uh, she's thick as fuck. So. That's really all I need to know there. That's all we're putting there, her there for. I have autism. Next up, we have Sonia, one of the most recent Pulpit girls to be added to the uh, to the roster. She's from Sword and Shield, of course, and she's going in the wife category. She is fucking hot, for starters. She's cute as fuck, she's hot, whatever you want to say. Whatever word you want to use. We're using that word. That word, it fits. You know, she took the gym challenge uh, years ago. She was friends with Leon, and they took the gym challenge together. Uh, obviously, she didn't win, or, in, or make it very far, um, it seems. But, that doesn't matter because her goals eventually changed so she would become like a Pokemon uh, researcher at the end of the game. Spoilers for Sword and Shield, by the way, uh, in case you gave a fuck about the fucking shitty story of Sword and Shield. You know, she, became, she becomes a scientist at the end of the game, and that's very commendable. Again, big brain, that's, that's some big brain things I can relate to, but not to where it's like, oh, she's definitely smarter than me. No, 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 we can't have that. We can't have a girl smarter than me. That's not okay. We can't have that. I'm big brain. And last on the Poke Girls, I think it's last, we have Valerie from the uh, the Kalos League, one of the Kalos gym leaders. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put her in no. I'm not into the whole like big fairy eye thing. Not, and like, it's weird, it's fucking creepy. Like imagine you go up to your girl and she got like big ass fucking anime eyes randomly. It's like, ah, fuck, what the fuck is that? Like look up like Google like anime characters in real life. This shit's fucking creepy. You, you know, a lot of these characters, we're, we're, we're simplifying them. We're like, oh, if they were a real person, I'd be into it. But if you think about Valerie, it's like her eyes look like that anyways. No other Pokemon character's eyes look like that. So I would assume that if she were a real person, her eyes would look like that. And it'd be fucking creepy. So no, I'm not having it. All right, up next we have some Nintendo characters. Starting off, we have uh, Princess Daisy. Uh, no, fuck you, Daisy. Nobody fucking likes you. Next we have Peach, Princess Peach. Also, as you would, as you would assume from uh, the Super Mario's. Uh, uh, I'm gonna put her in wholesome because I don't know that I would hit that. Because that's that's Trump thing, Trump's thing. You know what I mean? You know, when Mario found out Trump was in Peach, it's it was it just wasn't pretty. You know, he didn't take it very well. And I believe this is the last Mario character of the Nintendo the Nintendo gals, as it were. We have Rosalina. I would smash the hell out of Rosalina. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, she's kind of got the the, the 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 eye the hair over the eye thing. I kind of think that's kind of cute. Um, the blue aesthetic is also kind of cute. Bleach Blonde, I fucking love Bleach Blonde. I think Bleach Blonde is fucking hot as hell. Um, our next Nintendo gal seems to be Samus Aran from Metroid. Um, I would put Samus in... I'll put her in Dateable. Because I feel like Other M, I mean, I haven't played Other M, but the story of Other M, I, you know, I know a little bit about it. And I know not everybody likes Other M, but the story really humanized her and made her seem like an actual person with struggles and, and... Um, you know, character depth as opposed to just like, I'm robot who shoot people, pew pew pew. So we're gonna put her dateable because there's that. She's got a decent uh, character arc and I respect that. And she's also hot as fuck. All right, next up on the Nintendo Girls, we have Mithra from uh, Xenoblade. I don't play this weeb shit. I just know the characters and I know I want to fuck the characters. So we're gonna put Mithra in, we're gonna put her in dateable and we're also gonna put Pyra in dateable as well because they are both kind of, the same characters from what I'm given to understand, and they are very much um, hot, as it were. Hot and or cute, whatever you wanna do. They got the cute face with the hot body. I'm into that completely. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm into both of them, both of them equally. 
I would take them both together in a heartbeat. I don't care. Uh, next up for the Nintendo girls, we got Twintel, I believe her name is, from ARMS. Um, I'd smash that pass, because I don't know anything about her personality or her character to really make a complete judgment call on. Oh, and next we have, um, what is it, Marina from Splatoon. Uh, I chose her specifically out of the four, um, the, the news hosts or whatever from Splatoon, out of, you know, Callie, Marie, Marina, and Pearl. I chose uh, Marina because she's fucking cute as hell, but I wasn't feeling any of the other squids. The other squids are fucking weird. Like, Kelly and Marie look old, and Pearl looks like a fucking toddler, so that's gonna be a no for me, dog. But Marina, she's fucking cute. I would put, I'm gonna put her in wholesome, cause I don't know that I'd be into the whole tentacle thing, cause that'd be kind of weird. You know, it's like, oh, oh, thanks, you have a tentacle. Oh, don't put that near me. Um, thank you very much, though. And I believe uh, this is the last for the Nintendo girls. We have. Um, the Wii Fit Trainer. I would put the Wii Fit Trainer in the Smash the Pass category. Specifically, because she's literally a blank slate. You could imagine anybody on the Wii Fit Trainer, and it'd be like, I'm in. You should... I can imagine this. And I guess, uh, to move on to Nintendo characters who aren't exactly Nintendo characters, but we're gonna put them in here anyway. We have Shantae. I going to give Shantae a fucking wholesome. I don't know what it is about her, but... I'm, I'm just not into it. I'm really not. Um, next up we have Risky Boots, I believe is her name, from the Shantae games. Her head's cut off here, so I don't even know. So this was this was, this was was recommended to me by someone on the Discord, so I don't know anything about Shantae. So we're gonna put her in Smash in the Past, because she seems like she's, she seems like she's down. She seems, she seems like she's DTF. Um, and a, of course, a pirate. Pirates are a free spirit. I'm into pirates. Pirates are pretty cool. If I could be a pirate in fucking real life, I totally would. And next up we have, what is this? The zombie, the zombie girl from fucking... Um, Shantae. No! I would never date anybody who's undead. I would never, I would never hit that. At all. I would do no, I would want nothing to do with this. You know why? Because imagine, right? She's a zombie, right? So imagine that she's giving you a little, you know, she's waxing your carrot, as it were, and her fucking hand falls off. What the fuck? That's, that, that's an instant, like, fuck you. I'm out. No way. No thank you. Fuck you. Fuck off. Consume me. Alright, but next up we have the girls from My Hero Academia. Um, so we're gonna start off with Froppy. Froppy seems wholesome. I don't know why a lot of people want to fuck the frog, because that is fucking weird to me. Why do you want to fuck the frog? That's creepy. She's not even that, like, she's not even, she doesn't really have sex appeal to me. Uh, I believe it was the, uh, I don't remember if it was an OVA or a special or whatever. There was a My Hero, uh, OVA or something like that, where it was kind of like, um, uh, Suyu's backstory, where she had like a friend in uh, middle school or whatever who was like a big old lizard that nobody fucking liked, so they became friends and you know, it was really, really fucking wholesome. I would totally be like, yo, let's be friends. She seems like a very caring individual, you know, there was times on the, in the show where she like, you know, fucking broke out and cried because she cared about her friends so deeply, but they wouldn't fucking risk their shit to go fucking save Bakugo or whatever. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to hit that, you know what I mean? Next up we have Kyoka Jiro. Uh, I believe she has an arc coming up in the anime, if I'm not mistaken, because she's featured very heavily in the opening. But, I'm gonna put her in dateable. She's cute as hell. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the whole, uh, you know, the, the whole emo thing going on there, but... Uh, you know, I guess when she's out of her school uniform and she's into like casual clothes, it's kinda, it's a lot cuter, I guess it works a lot better. She's into music, I fucking love music. Um, so she seemed like she'd totally be a down to do like a jam session or whatever, you know? Um, do like one of them BFGF fucking, uh, cover, cover videos on YouTube that fucking get a million views because there's a million of them. But no, yeah, like, I feel, I feel like Jiro is one of the most underrated girls in, uh, fucking, um, my hero. Next up, we have Midnight. I want to put her in data. Her whole superpower is literally she's like a dominatrix. She literally just wants to fuck you all the time. That's her literal superpower. She's also got like very wholesome elements about her. Like I believe there was a like there was a filler episode last season of My Hero where they had to like solve like a mystery or whatever. And you know Midnight was playing a character, but she was also being like, oh, it's a it's a love story. I'm all into it. She's all feeling like she's like what is uh what is what is sex without love really that's i feel like that's what midnight really kind of stands for like she can she can pound you to town but if she's she doesn't if she doesn't actually like you then she's not gonna do it uh, next up we have uh momo yao yorozu um from my hero i'm gonna put her in smash then pass because she just seems really fucking boring personality wise i mean she had those confidence issues in season two where it was like oh that's kind of an interesting arc but other than that it's like really mm, let's be real She's got some fucking milkers on her, you know what I mean? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Why did I say that? It was fucking weird. That's fucking weird, bro. This whole list is weird, but that was fucking weird. But like, like she, her, her character is just like, yeah, I'm smart, I know exactly what I'm doing, I have a lot of money. It's like, okay, that's, that is, you know, money means nothing if you're a complete fucking bland human. So fuck you. Uh, next up we have, uh, Oshako Uraraka. Um, 
she's pretty wholesome. She, like, her features are accentuated when she's in her superhero suit, you know what I mean? Deku is, is uh, all up in that. Um, but I personally think she's kind of kind of bland, and I probably wouldn't want to hit that, to be completely honest with you. Next up, we have Mina Ashido. Kind of, kind of, she's going in there for kind of the same reasons as, like, you know, Skyla. She'll definitely, like, lift you up when you need to, when you're down, you know, she's very, a very outgoing kind of person, and she'll totally, she'll be there for your emotional support, you know, she'll support you emotionally, while also being hot as fuck. She's also an alien, so I don't know if that'd be, they'd be kind of creepy, I guess, maybe in real life, but... I don't know. Next up, we got the, the the girls from One Punch Man. We got the psychic sisters or whatever they're called. Uh, right now, first up, we have Fu Fubuki. Fubiki. I don't remember how the fucker fucker name is. Fubuki. I don't know. I, honestly, I'd put her in Smash Then Pass. In One Punch Man season two, they didn't do a very good job of making me feel like uh, she was anything more than just like eye candy. You know, like she was just literally there so that uh, they could flaunt big old, big old titties. That's literally the only reason she's there. So I don't really know anything about her personality. Like she's living in the shadow of her sister, so I guess that's kind of part of her personality or her like arc or her character or whatever in the show. That's, that's kind of lame to me. That's kind of a boring arc and she's really only there to be eye candy. So moving on, we got Tatsumaki. We got Terrible Tornado herself. We're putting her in... Actually, I'm not sure. I'm honestly torn between dateable and smash then pass because honestly, I'm gonna put her in smash then pass because she's hot, like she's cute, but like she's, again, she's a tsundere. And I like tsundere's, I like the tsundere character. I like the vibe of, of tsundere's. I like the tsundere's when they're like, yeah, I don't fucking like you, I hate you. But in reality, they're just, they're lying to themselves. They really, they really do like you. Tatsumaki is, she's, she's a tsundere in every sense of the word, but not in a way that's like, cool you know what i mean next up we have the this this character we have actually all three of the girls from this new this new anime this was requested by uh yeah, by somebody on the discord i don't remember i think it was chris peaches um actually maybe it's another discord maybe it's in a stream i don't remember somebody requested this. i think it was chris peaches who re uh requested this um but the girls from the new anime uh izoken izoken i don't know i don't know what it's about um but we're gonna put all of them in wholesome the, i i i there is zero sex appeal to them at all, to be, if I'm being completely honest. People keep telling me I act like this character. I, I've i never seen the show, so I don't know, but like, fuck you. Oh, hold up, we missed a Korra character. We missed a Korra character. We forgot Opal. I'll put Opal in Dateable. Kind of for the same reason as a lot of the Dateable characters, because she's really fucking wholesome. She's, she'll be there to like emotionally support you, but she's also hot as fuck. She's fucking cute as hell, especially in that like skin tight air airbender suit. Mm, my boy Bolin is a lucky guy. That's all I'm saying. All right, but moving on to the uh, the kill a kill uh, characters on here. Um, first we have uh, Nanan Jakuduze. I don't remember how you say her name, but I'm gonna put her in dateable, kind of for the same reason that I put uh, Jiro in dateable. Cute as hell, but also into music, and I like the music musical vibe. You know, we have a little jam band, have a little jam sesh with each other. You know, it's kind of cool. Next we have uh, Ragio Kyudin from Kill a Kill, the main villain, I guess, of Kill a Kill. Uh, spoilers for the second half, I guess. A lot of people refer to her as the Disco MILF, and as we've established, I'm not really into the whole MILF thing. I would totally smash Ragio, but the problem is, like, you're, you're taking a gamble with her. Let's be real. When just by looking at her, there's one of two things you can, you can identify immediately. Either A, she washes her pussy, you know, frequently. You know, so it's probably pretty clean and pristine down there. That's the best case scenario. But worst case scenario is option B, where she has never washed her pussy in her life. Just looking at her, she, I just get that vibe. I get the vibe that she's never cleaned out her fucking pussy. Um, so it's either really clean down there or it's really fucking stank down there. It's like, damn girl, you got that Trisha Paytas pussy? You got that rotting pussy? What the fuck? Uh, next up we have Satsuki Kyurin. Um, I'm gonna put her in Smash the Pass as well because she's, she's again, she, her personality is too, she's too fucking intense. You know, um, like she's really fucking intense. She's like, yeah, I'm gonna be the fucking best. Fuck you. Yeah. That's the vibe I get from her. Like she's super fucking intense. She also seems super fucking uptight, and I'm not really, really into that. Now, when we get to Ryuko, if you saw my last year's video, then you know exactly why I, why Ryuko's in here. She's cute as hell. She's she's soon today, but not like really mean soon today. She's like ah, bah, ah, but like also, you know, like she's got she's got a deeper side to her that she'll she she won't be afraid to um. To share, you know, she won't be afraid to share her deeper, the deeper side of herself, which makes her better than any other soon today. To be completely honest with you, she's also got a scissor. Who knows what that could mean? Who knows what that could be an analogy for? You know what I'm saying? Now this one, this last, this is uh, Rukia. I don't, I don't remember her last name, but I think she's from Bleach. I'm not sure. This one was requested uh, by um, Pedro uh, on Discord. We've talked about this in my streams. 
um, on Twitch.tv backslash Chunky Monkey Games. Go check it out. But we've had we've debated about this 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 particular girl ad nauseum on my streams because he thinks she's a top tier waifu. I think she looks fucking basic as hell. I mean, she's cute and all, but like, I'm gonna put her in wholesome. Um, because I don't know that I'd hit that, but she seems cute, and I would totally be like, all right, she seems, she seems nice. I don't know. She doesn't seem like crazily intense or like overly shy or anything like that. She just, you know, she seems cute. Like, she's kind of like, she seems like Rei Ayanami, right? Where I would, I would totally be like, um, you know, I, I would totally just find pleasure in just making her smile. You know what I mean? Wholesome. Wholesome as hell. Uh, also, fuck you, Pedro. Next up, uh, this was, I think this was also requested by Pedro. This is a character from, uh, Wack Fu, I think. I think it's like that French anime or whatever. Uh, we're putting this character in Wholesome. I don't know anything about this character, but she looks kind of cute. All right. Now, these last eight, uh, I saved for last, specifically, because... This is like a make or break situation here. These are the girls from Honey Pop. If you've never played Honey Pop, do yourself a fucking favor and do that. Um, 18 plus, by the way. But the girls from Honey Pop, I feel like you could tell a lot about uh, a, a person and who, what they're, what they're into um, by who their favorite Honey Pop girl is. So we have eight of them here. I didn't include all of them. I tried to include Tiffany, but the picture wouldn't load. And I didn't want to do any of the secret characters because I don't want to spoil anybody. Um, you know, even though the game's been out for years and the Honey Pop 2 is about to come out anyways. So, we're start off, well, let's go with Aiko. She's a university professor and she is DTF. Um, so she's smart and she's down to fuck. So I'm putting her in dateable because I, I like those, the combination of those two things. You know, if you, if the girl ain't smart, it's fucking useless. What's the point? Not to go all r slash I am very smart or anything, but like, I feel like my intelligence is kind of on par with hers and, uh, you know. She's, she's DTF. Next up we have Audrey from, from Honey Pop, of course. And um, she is going in Smash Then Pass for the same reason as, um, what is it, Jesse and Asuka and Tatsumaki. It's just she's she's hot and I'd hit it, but like she's super bitchy. She's a Tsundere without any of the redeeming qualities that make like a good Tsundere. You know what I mean? Uh, next up we have Belly. We're getting a little exotic up in here. We have Belly. Uh, she's going in dateable because... Not only just look at her, she's 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 hot, she's cute, she's got the combination, she's got the combination going on, but uh, she's also very she's very timid, and I, I think that's kind of cute, and I think that's a cute little personality quirk there. Next up, we have Jessie uh, from Honey Pop. Now, honestly, uh, personally, I think she is the hottest of or of the Honey Pop girls, but she doesn't seem very faithful. You know what I mean? So I don't know if I would date her per se. So we're gonna put her in Smash Then Pass because based on some of the, requ the responses you get in the game when you're like conversing with her or whatever, she doesn't seem very faithful. She's like, oh, how do you feel about uh, if I were to fucking cuck you completely? It's like, no, fuck you. Next up, we have Kiana from uh, from Honey Pop. We're gonna put her in dateable for kind of the same reasons as like Tifa. She is a parent, so obviously she has the very caring elements uh, for her, of her, about her. You know, she's hot. She's 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 very caring, and you know she would totally take care of you if you were like sick or whatever. So wholesome as hell. I'm into that. Next up we have Q. Q. We're wifing Q. You know why? Because even though she's not exactly the the most attractive character in Honey Pop, she's not obviously real because she's a fucking fairy creature. But she is not only she's is she DTF, but she's also got like a really good sense of humor. And honestly, we need more uh, girls in this world with a good sense of humor. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, all right, yeah. She, she'll, she'll make fun of you for jerking off. She'll make fun of you for who you fuck. She will make fun of you for getting shit wrong about her. It is, she's got a great sense of humor. She will fucking, <clears throat> all right, next up we have Lola from Honey Pop. We're gonna put her in dateable for the same reason as, the, as uh, Kiana and Belly. We're putting them in there. Well, last, I would say last but not least, but she's definitely least on, as, as far as the Honey Pop girls go. We have Nikki from Honey Pop. She's going under no, because I don't like anything about her. She gives me um, very, she gives me autistic vibes, and that's kind of to be expected, because she's kind of like the epic gamer girl of the Honey Pop girls, and I'm not into that at all. She's like, she doesn't know how to carry a conversation. It's, it's a game where literally the characters are programmed to, to, to respond to you. And she's just like, um, yeah. End the conversation like a normal human, please. Fuck! And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't hate autistic people. I myself am probably fucking way far on the spectrum. But, like, I just don't like her vibes. I don't like her vibes at all. Nothing about her. She's also not even that attractive. She's kind of cute, I guess. But not my type. Just not my type. I'm not into it. But ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for the uh, the, the white food tier list. But um, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think. If you like the video, drop a like. If you uh, hate me, just dis dislike the video. I don't give a fuck. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you, what foods you what your favorite white foods are. Um, and how you're gonna spend your Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I've been Matt CMG. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.